Hello. Today, let's talk about the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And if you find this video to be helpful, please do subscribe to my channel, and that will help other people find the video as well. So when we're talking about living things, there are three domains of life, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Now remember domains, when we talk about domains, we're talking about this taxonomical classification, right? So the main kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, and domain is the highest level. So everything, all life on earth is included in one of these three domains, bacteria, archaea, or eukarya. Now, bacteria and archaea, organisms in those two domains, are known as prokaryotes. Okay, say that word, prokaryote. And organisms that are in the eukarya domain are known as eukaryotes. Now, the word karyote or carrion, we use that in biology a lot to refer to the nucleus. The origin is, is nut or kernel, but in biology, we mean that nut or kernel to be the nucleus. So prokaryotes are those organisms that actually were around before, that's the pro part, before the organisms that had a nucleus. Okay, so these are the earlier evolutionary organisms. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, well, you means true. So these are the ones that have a true nucleus. Eukaryotes are organisms whose cells have a nucleus within them. Within the eukaryote domain, we have kingdoms that include fungi, plants, animals, and protists. So those are our eukaryotes. And today we're going to talk about the difference between the cells of prokaryotes and the cells of eukaryotes. Now, the first thing we have to consider is that there are certain characteristics that all cells possess, whether they're prokaryotes or eukaryotes. And the first thing is that they have a plasma membrane, which we also call a cell membrane. Now, a plasma membrane is simply that membrane that walls off the cell from its external environment. And it's made of what we call a phospholipid bilayer. And this layer, only two molecules thick, is what separates the cell from the external environment. So all cells, regardless of whether they're prokaryotes or eukaryotes, have a plasma membrane made of this phospholipid bilayer. Another characteristic of all cells, whether they're prokaryotic or eukaryotic, is that they have DNA. And generally that's stored in the center of the cell. Now we know that it's DNA that makes up the genes and those are the hereditary information and all of the instructions for carrying out the activities of the cell. Now also all cells have a cytoplasm that surrounds that central region. The cytoplasm is a term that refers to the cytosol and anything found within the cytosol. So the cytosol is sort of the liquid within the cell, okay? So it's this semi-fluid aqueous solution within the cell. Now that's the liquid part, but there also can be structures found within that liquid of the cytoplasm, such as ribosomes. All cells have ribosomes. Ribosomes are the structures that are gonna assemble proteins. And all cells, for instance, have a cytoskeleton. So they have a framework of proteins that help to give shape to the cells. Okay, so regardless of whether cells are prokaryotic or eukaryotic, they're going to have a plasma membrane, they're going to have DNA inside of it, and they're also going to have a cytoplasm inside of the cell. Okay, so now let's talk about the differences we find between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. And as a reminder, remember that prokaryotes include organisms in archaea and bacteria, and eukaryotes include organisms within the eukarya domain. So here is a typical prokaryote, and we see that there's DNA inside of it. Generally, it tends to be kind of elongated, and uh, we see some ribosomes inside, as promised, and the plasma membrane. But we can see that prokaryotes also have layers on the outside of the plasma membrane. And often they'll have something called a flagellum, which is a structure that helps propel them so they can move through the environment. And things called uh, pili, or the singular is pilus, that allow them to attach to other cells. 
Now here is a typical drawing of a eukaryote. And just looking at these two, you can see that the eukaryotes tend to be a little more complicated. Now this isn't also to scale as we'll find out soon because eukaryotic cells tend to be larger than prokaryotic cells. But you can see it also has DNA inside of it. It has that side of cytoplasm and it has ribosomes as well, but it has other structures within it too. So let's go through these, okay? Prokaryotes are always unicellular organisms, whereas eukaryotes can be unicellular or multicellular. Well, what does that mean? Unicellular, uni means one, like a unicycle. So all prokaryotes are only one cell big. Think about a bacterium, right? It's made up of one cell and that's it. That's the entire bacterium is one cell. So that is the rule for prokaryotes, okay? RKO cells or bacterial cells are one cell only. On the other hand, eukaryotes can be unicellular, like some protists or al uh, amoeba, for instance, but eukaryotes can also be multicellular. For example, animals like humans or plants. Uh, so those are multicellular organisms. So that's the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Another difference, as promised, is the size. So prokaryotes are generally smaller, whereas eukaryotes are generally much larger. So here's an illustration of that. We see here is a bacterium, which is generally two to three, one to five microns in size or micrometers in size, whereas a human cell in comparison is much larger. It's you know, two to 10 times the size of, of a bacterium. Now, again, we're talking about the standards here. There are always going to be exceptions to the rules, okay? They're always going to be big prokaryotes or small eukaryotes where maybe they'll overlap in size. But generally, prokaryotes are going to be smaller and eukaryotic cells are going to be much larger. The third difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is that prokaryotes often have a cell wall outside of the plasma membrane. And that's that structure that we saw. Now, this is an extracellular structure. That means it's found outside of the plasma membrane. And there can be different types of cell walls. In fact, if you've ever heard of gram positive or gram negative bacteria, well, that distinction is made depending upon what makes up the cell wall of that particular bacterium. On the other hand, eukaryotes, some of them might have a cell wall. For instance, uh, some fungi or plants have a cell wall, but it's not the same cell wall as prokaryotes, okay? So prokaryotes, all of them have this cell wall outside of the plasma membrane, whereas only some eukaryotes have a cell wall. And we call it a cell wall, although it is a different structure. It's made up of a different uh, substances. But uh, animal cells, like human cells, for instance, don't have cell walls. A fourth distinction between the two is that prokaryotes store that DNA in the central area of the cell, which we call the nucleoid. Now, eukaryotes have a specific membrane-bound structure that the DNA is stored in, okay? And we, of course, call that the nucleus. That's a major difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is that eukaryotes have a nucleus. The fifth difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, well, both of them contain ribosomes, but eukaryotes have all of these membrane-bound organelles. Organelles are like little structures within the cell that carry out specific activities. So we know mitochondria, right? Mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. That's where most of the reactions take place to break down glucose and turn it into ATP, energy for the cell. OK, or for instance, the Golgi complex helps to package up proteins for shipping them to other areas. So eukaryotes have all of these specific organelles that are bound by membranes. So they're kind of like little compartments within the cell. On the other hand, prokaryotes do not have organelles. They have ribosomes, right? Those ribosomes are going to make proteins, but they don't have these separate little structures. Now, the last thing I want to mention for prokaryotes is that all the reactions, those biochemical reactions within the cell are going to happen within the cytoplasm or within the plasma membrane. Um, so they still have those reactions, but they generally take place in the cytoplasm or on the plasma membrane. 
but eukaryotes, because they have all of these different uh, organelles, they'll have a lot of different biochemical reactions that take place in the different organelles. So just like our human body has all of these organs and each organ is responsible for a certain activity, it's kind of the same with these organelles, these little organs within the cell, that in each eukaryotic cell, we have these organelles and specific functions take place within each of those organelles. And that means that the biochemical reactions for that specific function take place in that particular organelle. Okay, so some organelles are going to be responsible responsible for making fats, lipids, for instance. Other organelles like mitochondria, well, that's where most of the reactions are going to take place to convert uh, glucose into energy. So prokaryotes still have these biochemical reactions, but without organelles, they're going to take place primarily in the cytoplasm or along the plasma membrane of the cell. Okay, to summarize real quick, we have prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Organisms within the domains archaea and bacteria are known as prokaryotes, whereas organisms within the domain eukarya are known as eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are unicellular and they're generally smaller. They have cell walls outside of their plasma membrane and they have DNA, which is generally in the center of the cell in a region we call the nucleoid. On the other hand, eukaryotes, some of them are unicellular, some of them are multicellular, and eukaryotic cells are generally much larger than prokaryotic cells. Some of them uh, might have a cell wall, like plant cells, for instance, have a cell wall per structure but it's made up of different constituents than the cell walls of prokaryotes. And it's not a rule that eukaryotic cells have to have a cell wall, okay? Like animal cells, for instance. Our cells do not have a cell wall. We also have DNA within eukaryotic cells, and it's stored in this membrane structure called a nucleus. Now, eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells both have ribosomes, but eukaryotic cells also have organelles, which are separate little membrane-bound structures. And what does that mean? That just means that membranes, just like the membrane of the plasma membrane, wall them off from the rest of the cell to make a separate little structure within the cell. On the other hand, prokaryotes do not have organelles. And because eukaryotes have organelles, a lot of the biochemical reactions that take place within the cell are going to take place within the organelles. On the other hand, prokaryotes don't have organelles, so their biochemical reactions to sustain themselves are going to take place within the cytoplasm or the plasma membrane of the cell.